in the army of God or are you in the army of the beast? Very important question at this very time because as testimony of Jesus is very explicit about those people who are in Christ or those who are not. And so the Bible tells us before the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ when he comes back, he, he comes back to earth, he comes on a white horse and he's got an army with him and that's Jesus' army. But also it talks about the beast and the false prophet and they form an army to fight and make war on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm going to be reading from the scriptures about that in Revelation 19, 19 to 21. And this is what the Bible says. Okay, here goes. It says, this is talking about uh, after um, the, this battle goes on, and it says, You want to put the mic on the... Oh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know why we have the stand. <laughs> So I can use both hands. Yes. And this is what it says. It says, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on behalf of his saint, um, on behalf of uh, the um, Antichrist, sorry. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the lake of fiery, fiery lake of burning sulphur and the rest of them were killed with the sword that came from out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. So that tells you that there's no winners on the, the wrong side. <coughs> and so what we need to know is that we do have a choice to choose which side to be on and that's what I'm asking you today. Do you choose to be in the army of the Lord or with Satan? So, and I'm going to read what happens to those people uh, in Revelation 27 and 10. And this is what the word says. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number they are like the sands of the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulphur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's the word of God. It's telling you about the future, what's going to happen for those who are not in Christ. But I'm going to tell you about the love of God. That's the most important message you'll ever hear because it says, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whomsoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
But it also says in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, then you'll be saved. Amen. But also it tells you about Jesus saying, he was talking to Nicodemus when he came to his house, and he said, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, goes on further to say he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it's a very important message to understand that being born again is not just simply hearing the gospel and believing. Uh, that's only a one talent person who run the risk of being thrown out. Uh, but also it talks about <coughs> talks about receiving by asking. In other words, to be born again you really need to ask God because he won't do anything unless you ask him because he gives us a, a free will, a choice, and we need to ask him and he will. Otherwise, there's no activity going on uh, unless <laughs> your Christian brothers are praying for you. And so, but it says this about what happens when you repent. talks about repentance because um, Apostle Peter said, he said, uh, he said, God would have it that none perish and all come to repentance. So that's what God's heart is. He wants everybody to be saved. And so it says, uh, what happens is that in 1 John 1, 9, it says, God is faithful to forgive. Uh, if you repent, he will deliver you from all unrighteousness. And so what this means is that you're clean on the inside. He kicks all the demons out. And so what happens is with those demons, there's a scripture that talks about this and it talks about, it says that when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it wanders around in dry places looking for a place to rest. When it can't find anywhere, it says to itself, I'll return to where I came from. And so he, he returns, finds a house swept clean and put in order and takes with him seven other spirits more evil than himself. So the condition of that person is worse at the end than what it was at the beginning. So that's what the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about. You need to repent and ask God and you will receive because the gospel, you've just heard it, it should be a heart changing message. So don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't be in the army of the, the Satan, but be in God's army. So God bless you. Amen. Thank you.